Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have a return guest. The glowing, adorable, fresh from Florida for the week, weekend. Um, he does have a last name. I know him as Up and Adam, but you actually have a last name. That's crazy. I do have a last name. It's Newell. It's Newell, but everybody else, it's Up and Adam. It's Up and Adam. You have a great YouTube channel, and you are up on all the pop culture and the shows. We have a lot of the same mutual friends. Through interviewing them and being fans, we've become real friends. And last night... We were at the Sheena Shea um, live Sheena Shea podcasting concert. Yes. She, con- just like Shea Diaz has a comedy concert, Sheena had a podcast concert because she actually performed with a real band. Oh, my gosh. It was so good. There's so much to talk about with this, by the way. Yes. Oof. Okay. Let's – wait. What's my first photo? Here I am. Okay. She looked really cute. What's great about Sheena – And I is that we both have a good side and she doesn't hide it. She talks about it openly. So do I. And it's not the same side. So we are able to be friends. We are able to sit on stage together and feel confident because my good side then matches her good side. And um, it's a really important thing for people in 2023 to be friends with if you suffer from only having one good side that you only make friends with people that match you, you know? Oh my gosh, that is important. But it's very important. I learned Sheena's good side when she got me the job at Sir ten years ago. Yes. Because I was I went from being the first male host to her dedicated photographer for all of her photos. And she would make me retake, retake, no babe, retake this side. And she would make the fans like not like she would make them, I do. but she would just she would just turn on her other side. I, I you when I do meet and greets you know, sometimes based on where the stage is, and because we usually take the photos on the stage, and on occasion the, the the place will have them come to my right side. So then they're going to come be near my right. That's not my good side. Uh, and now I'm just putting it out there that you guys, I'm going to move you to the other side because I'm not going to enjoy those photos, and I'm less likely to reshare them. It's just a fact. We're not all perfect, but we're honest. I, Sheena and I. I feel like I've never noticed a side. Well, right now I have. You're perfectly. I, shut up. Listen, I I have one eye that He's looks like, like Quasimodo, no. and I'm missing a tooth back here because I'm getting my teeth rearranged. Right, <laughs> so we had to take a tooth out. So I look like I'm from Alabama on this side with a Quasimodo eye. So and now this is my. I'm embracing the bad side. Fuck it. I'm normalizing the bad side. Well, good. Well, anyway, getting to it. So she comes out. She sings, "Good as Gold," mm-hmm. which I just want to say. For something that when she first did it, and not every housewife had a song, and, you know, she got up on the stage of Sir, wherever she was, singing it, and it was kind of like a comical thing for the fans to see, has turned into such a great thing, embracing it, and then actually getting a great band to do another song with her, which she performed at the end of the show, which is the Apple song. Mm -hmm. And it was like a like it was rocking. Like it, both songs were rocking with this live band, while she sang the gold, "Good as Gold" and the Apple song. It was really good. It was really fun. What I love about it too with Sheena is she fully embraces. She's like, I'm not a vocalist. I don't have like this crazy skill where I'm going up there and I'm Mariah Carey. She's like, I just want to put on a show and have fun and go up there and just like rock out. If I could do that, then great. But I will I'm say like, she sang it live, mm-hmm. just like Luann does a lot. It's not. With singing over a thing. So it's like you're getting the fun. of. I mean, at least, exactly. Anyway, I thought she sounded great. I thought it was super fun. And then then you were the host. And then I came out and I was her guest. And that was pretty fun. And I didn't- You killed it, by the way. I I loved every bit of you being on stage. It was so funny. I was in the back with the sound technician and they were like, we get so many shows. And this one particular guy was not aware of who anybody was on stage. And he was laughing and you're like- 
fuck this bitch and like going on and he's like oh my god is she really saying that and i'm like heather mcdonald has entered the room because when i found out that the babies ocean and summer were going to be there i was like at first i was like sheena i had i was gonna go up there and be like i know what you guys are probably thinking who the fuck is this guy right and why is he here and i was like oh my god there's little babies i can't say that and i was like oh heather's coming fuck first of all these the kids like most of our kids will hear you know the words whatever and I went to I was with Lala, and it was right after the reunion, and we were in Palm Springs at her house, and we were walking to lunch with um, Logan and Leo, who are her husbands, her best friends, and Ocean was there, and Lala was talking about what happened at the reunion, it was like the day after, and she said, like, you know, fuck it or whatever, and then, and then little Ocean goes, fuck it, <laughs> she does a hand, and then we're like, truck, that's right. There's lots of trucks here, Ocean. And she's like, yeah, truck, oh. trucks, trucks. We're like, anyway, the girls were playing some ABC thing. They, you know, dance. They were dancing to the song. I mean, it was very cute. And um, it was really fun. What I also didn't realize is that the questions that Sheena were at, was asking me, because I didn't talk to Sheena really before, and um, and you would tell me what, a little bit what we're going to cover, but I didn't know that she really couldn't participate in the conversation about Bethany and Raquel because of being under contract. Right. So she had very good ways to get me to give my opinion. And then I was just like doing like a rant. And so I didn't really even know what it was, but I'm glad it was well received and the audience was great and they were really fun. So it was fun. You know, I was so excited because when Sheena invited me to her show, uh, just like when I went to the premiere party, right? I asked Sheena, I said, Hey, What is the, and I wanted to make sure with her that I could even talk about this, but I asked her, I was like, what is the show? Like, what's the format? And I did my show at the Bourbon Room last year. And so I was like, okay, what is, what are we doing? And she's like, two live performances. I said, oh, who's performing? She said, me. And I said, okay, so what's the rest of the show? And she's like, oh, I don't, we'll figure it out. You know, like I'm, she's filming. She's a mom. She's a wife. She has so much other shit going on. And she's like, I, I will figure it out. Okay. So I was like. Sheena, we're going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out. We're going to throw some games in there. We're going to play it. And- it. It was great. Brock was came up there. I thought it was just a really well-rounded, fun night. It's not a huge room, so I think the fans had a really good time. Yeah. And what a treat for the fans because um, so many uh, – the whole almost the whole cast was there. Lala, Lala was there. James was there. Yep. Ha- here I am with James with his cleft. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> we had a Valley Brat shirt on, which I loved. And then Ariana was there. I took this photo, <clears throat> by the way. And yes, we looked pretty cute there. And that's no filter. Now I'm looking up closer. Could have used one. Anyway, uh, it um so the so Ariana was there and I I gave her some tips which I will not give to everybody. I may have said this on the show before, but I don't want to remind people because I don't want other people that are gonna be competing against her in Dancing with the Stars to steal my tips that I told her. So hopefully she will take them, but I just told you them off I camera. I thought they were genius. And they're genius mm-hmm. tips to get her to win. So um, she's just as nice as ever, just as down to earth. Listen, even though she had all this good fortune come, she really made the lemonade and it really turned out just as nice as that, like just as down to earth and unassuming. And so I'm just saying, even though she's like such a bigger star than she ever was before this horrible tragedy, I don't think she's changed, and I think that's really nice. You know, it was interesting for me last night because I really wanted to make it a point to talk to her and Katie. Yeah. Um, because I was supposed to go film with Katie at something about her, and this was back in July. And then, of course, the permit issues and everything. And then Bravo. With the restaurant. Yeah. With the restaurant. And Bravo literally said, no Bravo talent. You're not speaking to anyone right now, especially Vanderpump Rules. Like, yeah. especially because they, a lot of the cast members, even Rachel, who had the TMZ interview that wasn't staged out uh, outside of the salon, right? And she gave away what was going on and what she was going to say at the reunion. Right. They're like, what the fuck? We're putting so much money into this. You don't get to ruin things. So I just, with everything that happened with Scandaval and talking about it so much, I wanted to make sure that I went up to Ariana and Katie and I wanted to say, listen, obviously I talk about these things, but I always open up the conversation. Wait, is something wrong? No. Here. Okay. Okay, you're just making me nervous. Yes. Cause so I just was okay. like, you know, we can always stop if there's something not working. Yeah, okay. So 
I was talking to Ariana and Katie, and I just wanted to make sure that they knew. Like, I open up the conversation, but I, it's always in their favor. And it's because I genuinely like them. But it's this weird, blurred line that I'm sure that you you deal with all the time. Because if I talk about a friend, then holy fuck, I'm getting a phone call. And it's going to be like so-and-so. And it's going to be like, what the fuck, Heather? And Well, that's – I uh, have to say I'm – I, I should pat myself on the back because that has never happened to really? me. Really? And I, I do keep the secrets. And then when they are revealed the way they're supposed to be revealed, whether the person tells it themselves or it's on a reality show or whatever, then I can kind of add to the juice that I heard at the time. And that's enough for me. Like, I don't need to. And I also don't want to ruin, you know, stuff. Right. Um, however, I did get some juice last night. Oh, shit. And I will... Somewhat share it. Okay, but okay, first of all, oh. this was fun. This was fun. Okay, so we're at okay, so after the show, we go to um I had I jump in Brock and Sheena's car. Mm -hmm. And um Brock is talking to me about stand up and you know how I got started, whatever. And I'm in the front seat and Sheena's in the back, and Sheena's talking about they filmed the night before and there were some real arguments that happened, and I'm like Shut up, Brock. Like, I want to listen to Sheena. Like, I want to listen to Sheena. Like, what What had happened last night when they were filming? And, um, and so I do want to say, in being friends with them and stuff, when, like, Bethany um, – I'll go back to this for a minute. When Bethany was, was saying on her show, like, I think this was manufactured and this stuff isn't true and all this other stuff, I can really say, in being friends with them, like, no, they – if they get an argument with someone the night before and it was on camera, it was – a real fight. It right. was organic. It was, you know, for reasons that were in their life, whether that is show driven or not, it's a real argument. And they'll share it with their friends, whether it's me or whatever, the same way you would if you got, a, if you weren't a famous person. So it's, it's a very, it is an authentic group of people that really have these relationships. And yeah, now their life is a, is bigger than being a waiter, obviously. Right. And I'm glad that the show is reflecting that with their different businesses and even maybe some jealousy about some of these brand deals and some of these opportunities that came from Scandaval, right. which is what we're going to see in this season is like the fallout and the prospering of of them all becoming famous and people choosing sides and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's going to be really interesting to watch. You know, it, I, I wasn't joking when I did my little bit up at the beginning of Sheena's show. And I was asked to interview for Vanderpump Rules. And I was asked about my husband. And when I sat down with them to do the interview, they're like, so what don't when you, you... They, when they were thinking about hire for you to be on the show. Right. So 10 years ago. They, well, yeah. I did it for season two. Oh, okay. And then they asked me to come back and do interviews for season nine because okay. Logan Cochran, who's Ariana's best friend, him and I got into a full like knockout drag out at the, at the front of Tom Tom one day. And the producer, Jeremiah, was there. And he's like... Who is this person? And he, I get Why a text message. Why did you get in a fight with this guy? Well, Logan, because Logan wanted to be in the back of the room. Richardson was working there, and nobody knew that I was doing the floor plans. But I did the floor plans because I wanted to make all the money. So I just wanted to make sure. Oh, this is just actual waiter the, fights. Waiter fights. Oh, okay. right. So he's just <laughs> watching this shit, and then I get a text message that said, "Hi, this is a producer from Vanderpump Rules." So he called me. I end up. I, I talk to Jason about it. I go to Sir and I film for this interview. Right. The whole time, it's so. What do you? what do you not like about Sheena? And I was like, I love Sheena. No, but like, really, she must piss you off. She probably annoys you. She's, and I'm like, no, no, not at all. And then I, I looked at Jason and Jason's like, what the fuck? Like, we don't Your husband. Not like, yeah, my yeah. husband. And he's like, we don't dislike Sheena. And I'm like, oh, this is what this is. And then after I took off the mic and I took my husband and my Mormon mother-in-law and we went and had tequila shots. And that's what we did. And I said, fuck reality TV. We're not doing this. Let's take it to the tube. And that's where Up and Adam was born. I, I took control I of the like narrative. It. Yeah. Um. So anyway, so we're, so we're at, so now we go to this bar called Melrose Place. Yes. Um. And it was kind of, a, at first when we got there, I was like, this is a shit show. Why am I not going home? But it was pretty early. It was only eight o'clock because the show started so early. Yeah. So I was like, I'm like, you know, we'll we'll go up for a minute. Let me observe what it's like to be young in LA going to these places that I used to go to. So I want to just observe. So we finally get up to gather everybody. We get up. And it's kind of nice because it's a hot summer night and it's a rooftop bar and there's a really good DJ. Right. Who, by the way, is playing like all the songs that I know and love, but then with like a DJ mix. 
So it's like the Eurythmics and like, you know, these like songs from like the 90s and the 2000s. So I, anyway, I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. And I kind of go, I'm just going to like observe what this crowd is like. And what I think is kind of cool about L.A. hipster life today, 2023, <laughs> is like you can literally rock any outfit from any era. You can be, and I'm going to say I don't care because you can be kind of white, tw- white trash country. Yeah. With a, not a ducktail, what do they call it? A mullet. A mullet. A mullet. A mullet. You can be um, 1990s Crips and Blood gangster. You can be a, a girl with just a bikini top on, but then big sweatpants and a pair of high heels. It's a very, like, you could wear, you could wear an Agora sweater and a G and an acid she, she wash jeans. You just go through Lala's whole closet. That's, That's what I feel. Thing. No, but it's, but it's also, but it's also like a different thing. And then you can also wear like a really sleek, classy black dress you can also be you know with your fancy designer purse and a tiny like when i when we would go out i was telling my sister this i'm like there'd be just like everyone would be dressing the same like you went to bb or bcbg you got your little velvet dress you know this kind of clunky heel is in or your chunky heel this is and if you weren't wearing that it was like oh you're kind of out of style you're not what i kind of love it went going out last night is that there were straights, there were gays, there was so many different people and everyone was having fun and there was a kind of a variety of ages. It wasn't all young. No. Yeah. And anyway, go it, to Melrose Place on a Sunday night. I thought it was pretty fun. Our, our friend who runs it, Chrissy, she's yeah. the one who put all of this together because I asked Sheena, I said, where's your after show? And Sheena's like, and I said, like, after party, where, where's, where's yeah. the party going? And so I reached out to Chrissy. Chrissy used to work at Pump. She killed it. But it was so funny because when I walked in, you're like, I don't know. I'm about to go home. I don't fucking know. And then I went and talked to you over at the table. Yeah. And then they were like, you guys got to get away from the table. And then all of a sudden I came back and I sat down to talk to Ariana. And you're sitting right next to her. And I'm like, wait. Well, the best is like- part is they only had one they only had re- one real table reserved. Right. And Sheena did have like the bottle service and that was kind of fun with the people like, rah, rah, rah. okay. But the pr- there were two pregnant people there, okay? okay. Pregnant women there mm-hmm. and very cute girls, you know, Janet who's on the valley and then this other girl, I don't know her name, she's gorgeous and she had her stomach exposed and she looked amazing. Yeah. So, so the pregnant women were there and they had the table for a minute but then it was time for the pregnant girls to go home. So then I was able to sit down and I had a really great, as my dad would say, people watching spot. Oh. Like I could just watch it all. So Logan and Leo, who are the be- the best friends of um, Lala, and they're really fun and they're friends with everybody. And they're like funny. They're like like a comedic duo, whatever. <laughs> and so they're like laughing and stuff. And... <laughs> They were like swinging from the trees. There's like there were bushes and they're like coming around and they're being silly and and Logan and Leo is like I have a present for you. It's Christmas and I'm like what are you talking about? And I look over and there is Tara Reed talking to Katie at our table and listen we've all seen Katie Reed no, sorry Tara Reed we've all seen Tara Reed lately right and I. I remember I was like following her on TikTok. I feel like she hasn't done them in a while. But she was doing some around Halloween and she was doing different Halloween costumes. And she was like, I'm a little fairy duster. I'm a, whatever, I'm a butterfly. Like she would just be like doing these, hey guys, who wants to see Josie and the Pussycats too? Like she's always been kind of a mess for a while. And like I interviewed her for this show called Hollywood. I can't remember the name. I did it with Ross. I can't literally remember the name of the show. But anyway, I had an interview her, and she had like a whole team of people like doing her hair and makeup. And she sits down, and it's like a live type of a thing. And she has all this red lipstick on her teeth. And I'm talking to her, and I'm trying to like focus on the, whatever. She's on Shark NATO 12, oh, and Jesus. I'm trying to having to ask about that, you know? And I'm like, these people hate her. Like, right. how can you, your job is to put the lipstick on her. And, w- and you're watching her. And I'm like, well, how could you not have made sure that she didn't have lipstick on her teeth? So she comes over. She's very thin. And and she's talking about how she is on, um, with Sandoval, she is on Oof. the Special Forces, World's Toughest Test. This is like to be a Navy SEAL or whatever the, the Navy SEAL Green Beret version of like 
English soldiers. I don't know. It's just like you, it's hard. Okay. Right. Not, not a show I want to be on. Dr. Drew was on it. And he's like, no, it was amazing. I'm so mad. I got sick. I got kicked out. I'm like, I, listen, I, I, I would be like, I'm ready to go home in, in four minutes. Like, yeah, just get your no, first paycheck and go. Not, but you're supposed to want to stay. But also because I don't know, because it is so hard, um, a lot of people really just can't handle it. Anyway, Tara reads on it. Right. And not that I know, but I would predict someone who is her age and like 85 pounds, I'm guessing she is not the one that's going to end up wanting to join the Navy SEALs. Okay? Winning. Like, like yeah. I'm guessing, and I'm guessing someone like Tom, who, Sandoval, who's very physically fit, it's going to probably last and do pretty well. In my opinion, I think it just comes to people being athletic or not. Even though some things are mind tricks or whatever. The majority of it is like, Stamina. can you fucking climb up this yeah. mountain with a backpack or whatever? Physical attributes. Yeah. And um, here is Tom and uh, looking real douchey in this photo. I mean, this is – I didn't like love – I didn't finish watching this show. I think it's genius that they got him. I think people are going to be into watching – because of him? Yeah, I do. I went to Publix the other day in my neighborhood, yeah. and I had a Scandival shirt on, a merch shirt that yeah. said underneath, Team Ariana. And the girl who was pushing the cart said, oh, my God, every time I see you wear that shirt, I'm like, fuck, am I wearing it all the time? Every time I see you wear that shirt, it reminds me of my last name. My last name is Sandoval. This older man is walking past, and he's like, oh, like that guy who's on the Special Forces, that celebrity on Special Forces. And I'm like, that is so funny that that's where you know him from, because we all know him as like the douchebag narcissistic, like asshole who fucked over Ariana, right? Yes. Not like Special Forces. Right. But okay. All right. That's where we're at. I just want to make sure. Um, okay. I just want to make sure what I had here. Um, okay. So uh, let me see what else happened here. Oh, here's the, here they are. I think Black China's on it, too. I think they got some good people for this. I don't know. It'll be interesting. Oh, and Joja Siwa? Yeah, they really do. By yeah. The, do you know what she said, though, by the way, last night? Jojo? Tara? No, Tara. Oh, Tara. No, what? You didn't hear what she said? No, do tell. So she walks up, and she's like, and everybody looked, and Ariana and Katie, everybody was like, the fuck is she saying? And she's like, I just want to let you guys know that I think Tom Sandoval is a really great person. And I think everybody really needs to back off of him. So that was the whole purpose of her walking over to the table. Oh. Like, read the room, girl. This is not the fucking table to go to to say, <laughs> I think that he's that you're advocating for the wrong asshole. What are you doing? Well, I just love that Logan and Leo like found her like in another section of this ro rooftop bar and was like beat bopping around yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> and so then then there's this other thing that starts to happen with this other girl that walks up to the group and when she first walked up to the group it was shortly after two people that ariana knew that ariana was super excited to see and was like ah like i don't know who they were but they were clearly good friends of hers so this other girl walks up and she's a pretty pretty blonde girl she's wearing like a, a black um bodysuit and jean shorts and you know minimal makeup like a very hot, pretty 20-something, whatever blonde. And she's talking to Sheena and being very animated. And so I'm, like, catching the conversation. And um, no, she did not know them personally until that night. Mm -hmm. And She had the juicy scoop. The juicy scoop is that she allegedly is saying, because I was there, um, that she has been seeing Mr. Sandoval for like a month and um, but she could have lied about it she could have whatever and hey he's a single guy it's not that big of a deal right, right. but being that I don't think the cast was aware that he was seeing anyone you know so this could be interesting maybe they're still filming maybe there could be um, her showing up I think she certainly wanted them to know who she was I mean I don't think it's a secret I think she would listen Anyone that's screwing Sandoval at this moment has aspirations to be on the show. Right. So, but I wonder, gosh, not to feel sorry for Sandoval that I don't, but like, you know, do do people on this show, unfortunately, or any reality show, these girls like... How do you trust them? How right? do you trust that they really actually like you? Or are they just like, hey... You're, you're a hot body. I don't really care. I like to have recreational sex. And if it can result in me being, being on a show with like cool, fun people and not like, I don't know how 
Now, could she have just happened to have been that night? Could she have been lying? I don't know. But it really made the night juicy because I'm like, oh my God. We're just, I'm like, I felt like. The funny we are th- really in it right now. We are really. Oh in yeah, it yeah, right yeah. Now. It was like we we had everything but the cameras. Yeah, yeah. But even the funny thing about this too is based off of what I've heard about Dan Ariana's new man. Yeah. It's like he really wants to let her shine. He kind of just supports her. He takes a step back and he doesn't want the fame of it. Right. Right. That's what I've heard, and I haven't met him, so I don't want to speak on it as if I have. But so I think not only is she winning in all other aspects, but then you found somebody who from what it seems, is not using you for a come up, right? Yeah. And then you have him. But the thing about somebody like Tom Sandoval, and this isn't a bad thing. You know, Tom did my show at the Bourbon Room last year. It was so nice for him to come. All of that. Of course, you didn't know what he was. Right. Wait, we didn't... during the, your show, would he have been seeing her? Was it in that well, time frame? It was April. Oh, I think the time, their time frame is so fucked. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, it was way we before. We still don't know. We yeah. still don't know. But I think for him... I've known Tom for 10 years, and when I first started at Sir, he was working the bar, and he was working like the restaurant bar side, and he would ask me, hey, did anybody call and ask if I really work here today? Did anybody? And he would ask the questions, like, are people... So he's always been about himself. So if you want to sit there and prey on somebody who has the fame and has the notoriety, all of it... He's probably all, not going to mind. All he's you probably, have to... Yeah, you just have to feed like it. it. You're yeah. like, oh my God, you're amazing. You sing so great. You. I walked up to him. He came to my husband's birthday at some rooftop whatever yeah. pool it was all of the sir people pump whatever and i said to him i said man you bought like a two million dollar house this is incredible look at you remember where you started and when i met you back then when and look where you're at now and he's like actually bro it was 2.3 million and i was like oh fuck off like fuck <laughs> off Fuck off, right? Like, f- fuck off. But but thank you for always being true to your character like you don't change you are who you are. That's what I'm saying. They are they 100% are the people that you see on the show. They are off camera. The good, the bad, the insensitive, the funny. All the, of it. All of it. It's yeah. like it really is, which is kind of great and which is sometimes a shame when you are a fan of reality show and we're going to get into some other reality shows where the cast just doesn't have that or the people are coming in with an agenda and we, we see it because we're sophisticated reality show watchers, you right. know? Right. So when it, it can be really... Um, fun. Okay, I'm going to skip through that picture because that was little. <laughs> that was one of the photos of of what I was just talking oh. about, and I put it in there. And I don't want to show the photo of whoever this person is because in case somebody's going to go back and freeze or, frame or whatever, or let you guys enjoy it if this person makes an appearance at the next event, right. which I predict that she will. You actually put four thousand dollars on it. I put four thousand dollars that yeah. she'd be at this thing that I'm going to be at Tuesday. Randomly, so I'm going to be texting you on Tuesday. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, which is today. You're listening to this today. So, um, okay, let's. Uh, oh, I do want to talk about a little bit more about the whole. Um, just because we talked about it, but um, with the reality reckoning. Okay, I just do want to, and oh. I'm not going to talk a lot about it, Bethany because you guys are like maybe sick of it, maybe you're not, but. I believe the reality reckoning has, I have never seen a movement that has had less momentum than the reality reckoning. The only person that has talked about it is Bethany herself. And we have, to this day, there is not one person that has joined her publicly in wanting to, like, sue former networks or whatever. Is there? Well, no. I think a lot of the people are building their cases behind the scenes and going to her. But a lot of the talent who, from what I've heard, a lot of the talent who's going to her, they're talent that are they're no longer signed on their shows. And I think what a lot of people are looking at this as is they hear you should be getting residuals. They hear that if you're not getting paid for those old episodes, then they shouldn't be airing them. And I think that people think residuals, like kind of old school back in the day, remember residuals were a lot. But now it's like you're getting pennies. And you didn't sign a contract that gave you residuals. You didn't, you know, for example. I just think it's a different model. Right. Like I, and, and I think that's why they're trying to figure out what the new model is for SAG and, and Writers Guild that makes sense for the future when it comes to streaming and stuff. Right. And yeah, they didn't sign it for that. But also the benefit is different in that um, when it does air, because it is your real life and you're not, you know, it's not like you were on a Disney show and now you're 30 and you're still getting some money because it's an NBC rerun of when you were a little girl or whatever. Right. And you're playing, you know, Ruby Huxtable or whatever, which right. by the way, they're mad because those shows can't air anymore because 
the dad was, you know, a disgusting rapist. But anyway, <laughs> um, but um, uh, Bill Cosby. But um, uh, what is kind of good is if if you are pushing a product or a persona or whatever, even if it's you're not on it anymore and it's airing five years and someone's watching it whatever if you share that stuff it is going to be profitable right for you whether it's the restaurant that you still own or now a lot of these products that people bring out black water or whatever diamond water that one girl from um shaw's they, they're not still around it wasn't a hit whatever right, right. but I, it, it's a it's a hard thing i just think one thing that that they said was you know we want NBC Universal to release the talent from the NDAs that yeah. they stated. And I'm so glad that Bravo spoke up and they said they can speak. We've never told them that they can't speak. Right. The only kind of thing that they agree to not talk about, like Sheena not being able to talk about it herself on, you know, in other platforms and other shows, is what's going on on the show right now don't spoil the storylines right and when i've interviewed people it's always like we're not going to spoil anything but anything from the past whether they're currently on a show and we're going to talk about hey three seasons ago they've always been able to talk about it. all my all my the early days of juicy scoop were all bringing people on that were former reality stars who told every behind the scenes secret Right, right. They weren't sued by the network after that. There was no gag order of how Rock of Love was ran. You like, know, it, it kind of, what confuses me a little bit about this is I feel like the message especially, and this is just opinion, right? Opinions are like assholes. We get that. But I feel like the message here with bringing on Rachel has kind of got a little bit lost because I know for a fact a, a few of her statements, like the, I hadn't been, I only spoke to Tom Sandoval twice in email and they weren't in a real relationship and Lala stole Brock's goddamn house and all of these things. It's like, I think now we're losing the message because then when you have like the shit that's going on with Below Deck and you have product, like members of production coming forward saying this man intoxicated was trying to press up on me, that's where there should potentially be like somebody in place to prevent that or say, get the fuck off this show. Right. Right. But that's not that's now we're not even talking about that. We're talking about somebody who is, you know, being yelled at on a show by these girls and saying, go fuck yourself with a cheese grater. But you also lied to her. Fa- you know what I mean? And like you said, they've all said really shitty things. So I yeah. feel like with that interview specifically, we took away from the the real message of needing to put certain things in place to make sure that these are safer environments. Right. But. Also, it's kind of like reality TV. You you well, make a deal hap- with the devil. It kind of happened with The Bachelor in Paradise. There was that incident where this girl was really wasted, drinking all day in Mexico, and they had to, like, shut down production because there was some guy kind of getting with her, and they thought that she was too out of it. I can't even remember the people. But that was, like, a controversial moment, and they they did shut it down. They did do a full investigation it is a, a hard thing, and I'm not saying I'm for it or not. I mean, like, you know, I I wouldn't want – I would never want to be on Below Deck if I was, you know, suddenly 25 and into yachting. I would not want to be on Below Deck. Yeah, yeah. I would not want cameras in my cubby bed while I'm, like, yeah. screwing some guy and my parents can watch it. It's not anything I would ever want right. to do for myself or I'd never want my kids to do that. So um, – but it's just – but I, I mean, the reality reckoning, I want to say, I think it's this is the, the real era is the era of Bethany blundering. Like she is just like putting all these crazy videos out, deleting them. She is trying to figure out what her next thing is. Now she's giving advice to 20 year olds trying to be an auntie. She's like, life is not a filter. It's, it's when I was in my 20s, I wasn't on yachts and you know, guys falling all over me and getting jewels. I had zits. I was, I had frizzy hair. And I'm like, no, you didn't. You were engaged multiple times. You <laughs> had many beautiful items that you received from wealthy men. You were not Aff- poor. Affiliated with the Hiltons. Yeah, you were not poor. Like, you went to fancy schools. Her dad was rich, right? Yes. Oh. Both dads were rich. The oh. dad and the step. So I'm just like, she's always just trying to... What's the next thing? You know, what's the next thing? Oh, this is going to make me like seem authentic. Like, And it's just kind of satisfying to see that the younger people that are into this and content creators themselves are calling around on her bullshit and kind of laughing at her like, in not a good way. Laughing at her, not with her. 
And for someone that kind of always saw her for what she is, very hypocritical, it's just very, it's a satisfying for me. That's it. That's, I just had to say, I, I'm listen, when I saw, I, I saw your sorry. video on Instagram and you're like, let me just say really quick, Rachel, you did yourself no favors. And at the end, you're like, here's a piece of advice and get on a show about how you like, fuck your best friend. And I was like, oh, my God. And I showed Jason and Jason's dying laughing. And he literally laughed so hard. We're at a bar and this woman looks over next to us. And I'm like, nothing's happening over here. Nothing to see. Nothing to see. I'm like, Jason, fucking tone it down. Well, let's move on to, um, a little bit about Real Housewives of New York. And um, you don't have to be watching the show, people that are listening to this, to get what we're going to enjoy the conversation because I'm right. not going to get into the nuances or the I don't over like recap the stuff right but I just kind of want to get your general opinion of what you think of the show in general and the young girls and what they're doing I mean they're they're younger uh Jenna Lyons is is 54 I almost feel like they could have taken like her and maybe one other person that like Aaron who I think kind of has kind of like an older soul yeah I would have meshed the two of them with a handful of the OGs and I would have kept, that's how I would have done it. I don't know that doing a whole new cast with nobody that's keeping us grounded to the housewives, but I kind of go back and forth. It's just a very different show. Right. But I did take some notes of a lot of things that are similar, but not as fun. Okay. So what, what are your initial thoughts before I get into like each character? So, you know, I think that they really tried to find people that resemble some of the other cast members. Um, like, Bryn gives you total Sonia Morgan vibes, right? Right. And then you have... It's just... What's interesting here is I try to always give, like, because these people put their lives out there, right? Like you yeah. said, it is real. So, but to... Produced. But then there are elements. I think... You give them, like, grace and, like, we get to meet them the first season. It's like our Dubai ladies. And we're yeah. meeting them. But then, I don't know. It makes me a little nervous. Like, are the housewives, are they going to continue to thrive? Or are we a dying brand? And not we, me. I'm not a housewife. But them, you know? I think about this. I'm like, are the real I, housewives? I actually think scraping it and starting with all new people now is not the best idea. No. But I they think always you've got to, like, take them, you know, get move one on or like parlay someone new like i th i kind of think but i'll tell you how bravo fucked up i'll okay. tell you right here yes they've they've tried to pivot what they did originally was every year with these bonuses with the nini leaks the vicky gumbles and the Teresa judice they're paying these women more 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 they want more mo like bonuses whatever but then the ratings started to go down from 3 million views, 2 million views. Now we're at 450,000 to 900,000 views, right? But I will say in that, I don't really think that's a fair estimation because that's just for when you watch it on Bravo, right. on regular TV at that time. Right. You can watch it on YouTube TV. You can watch it on Sling. You can watch it on Peacock. I don't know that that is included in when Bethany – you know, brags about, I was, you know, the most successful housewife that ever lived and our ratings were this. Well, yeah, your ratings 10 years ago, we're on the, one platform. the only game in town was watching it on cable. So like, right. I don't know. No, no, that's actually fair. But yeah, I think what they did was they started paying them so much. So then they tried to pivot and then they're like, Vicky Gummelson, we pay her a shit ton of money. We can take her off, bring in some new girl who would be thirsty for the camera time, give her sixty thousand dollars, and yeah. we're not paying nine hundred thousand or a million. And then let's see if we still have a good show, you know. Right. But then we tried to do that. We brought in the Noella Bergner on Real Housewives yes. of Orange County. She was tot a total fan that came on and came off like a fan. Yeah. And so we tried to pivot, and, and then, then now we, we're doing. I'm gonna go back to OC just because you're talking about OC. Then I'll go oh. back to New York. Go on. Yeah, we're. Then we tried to pivot, and like with Roni, we do a whole recast. Yeah. And it's like it's like I feel like right now we're taking pasta, we're throwing the shit at the wall, and we're seeing what sticks, right? right. When really we're so invested in the OGs, you might as well just give them their paycheck and keep them around because. Otherwise, people aren't really interested in seeing new people. It's like when Vanderpump Rules tried to pivot mm -hmm. season eight and they brought on Max, Brett Caprioni, uh, Danica, Dana, Charlie. Like, Charlie, fuck that. Like, you and know. The other, the other girl, the transgender woman. Um, Billy Lee. Billy Lee, yeah. Yeah, Billy Lee. But it's like they were trying to bring on new people because that's when they were going to do the spinoff. Yeah. But the cast, like, the, the fans wanted to know more about Sheena, Stassi, Jax, Kristen, Tom. Right. Tom, Katie, Ariana. And that's the thing. It's like you have a working machine. 
Just right. stick with it. If they like, don't let them abuse you in the contracts and be like, "We want more money." And like Rachel being like, "I need to be paid the same as Tom and Ariana." Well, oh, you, and I will that's say one that thing that came. It was controversy about how much um, Rachel made. Right. They, first, Bethany said, "You make um, less than what my interns make." Right. And then they said, "No, she made three sixty one for the year." And then someone said, "No, it must be that's what she's made in the entirety of being on Housewives." And then Sheena clarified on her podcast because she got the attorney and because they were so close, she is aware of her pay. And it was that. It was $19,000 an episode for 19 episodes, which equals 361. Right. And so that is 100% the truth. But what she wanted was to be paid as much as Tom and and Ariana. And just like Housewives, you get paid based on how many years you've been on. Same thing happened with Jill Zarin said, I want to be paid to go back for OG Legacy as much as... Everybody, well, Luann, being that she's been on for 10 years and Jill had only been on four, she was going to make a lot more than Jill. Now, of course, all these things can be broken. There's no, it's not in stone. This isn't, you can go, all right, whatever. It's valuable enough to just say, hey, we're going to make it favored nations. But in this case, that was one of the things I just wanted to clarify. So let's just go back to New York real quick. Okay, so this Aaron girl, this a lot of people say she looks like Jen Aniston. In this particular photo, she really does. She does from her um, her confessional, but um, and she really looks like her hair. Really looks like her hair. She's so pretty. She's really pretty. But sometimes when, but she doesn't always look like that. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. And then I also want to say this girl. Oh, Cy, okay. <laughs> this is not a great photo, for sure, but I was trying to grab the fact that she's wearing this top, and I know people that that are women will agree to this. I just want to push it down because it's like there's like stitching that is the cups around the boobs, but it's like hitting her above the boobs. And it bothers me so much that this isn't like underneath her cup. Is it making you feel like... like see see how her boobs are inside the cup? Is it kind of making Aaron? you feel like her nipples are up here? Yeah, it is. It's just like, it just doesn't look good and she's supposed to be a stylist. Why did they make this like... They made her look like a brat doll here. I don't know. It just... <sighs> okay. So let me let me just say another thing about the Bethany clause. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. Okay. About the Bethany clause. Now everybody she also said, you know, people have to pay um you 15%. know fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. And I'm like, I I think this is an urban myth. I think it's another thing that she started. I don't really think someone's getting a contract from Vanderpump Rule and it literally says the Bethany clause, or maybe it doesn't say the Bethany clause, but it's about that. Even if it's in there, I don't think that they act on it right because it like you really so they're really going to schwartz and sandoval they're really and where does that go does that mean if lala is wearing her send it to Daryl shirt i mean this have you season, asked that have you asked lala everyone has said they've never come after them every person i've asked said no like whether i had a book they never were like where's the 15 percent i mean they would have to get forensic accountants to figure this out so i just don't ble- i think what they if there is anything in there i think they say if you are launching a product really launching it it did not exist before right then you know we're going to have a stake in it but i still don't even know that they would really follow up on it it would have to be so successful that it would be worth it for them to try to collect it's kind of like like we're going to make sure that if another person sells uh, part of their business to Jim Bean for $100 million, we're getting our 15% in that case. I think also what what people do is when they have an event, they try to say, okay, you know, at the event, I'm going to, or while I'm cooking, I'm going to have my seasoning or my alcohol out there. Or I remember one time Ramona, you know, had something to do talking to somebody as they came in the room on like a girls weekend and she's just holding she's just like holding her like ageless which doesn't exist anymore skin cream because she was like let me try to get this and bethany franco when she's faking being upset about it's about tom is drinking her skinny girl there's that but then there's like actually like where they're actually in this case jenna lyons has an eyelash line right and we see this entire day of where she's doing a photo shoot for the eyelash line also, she talks to this other girl who she's helping decorate her house, and they're on Zoom. Right. And that girl is like, oh, I'm wearing your eyelashes, and and I love this case. And they, they it's all in there. Anybody watching this that's a housewife might be like, why the fuck are they featuring these, these eyelashes so much when 
I've been on the show for five years and I've tried to get, or like, let's say you're Tamara. I've, I've mentioned my CBD a few lot and I've had parties for the CBD and then they don't use it. And like, no. so it's my understanding, I would bet money on this, that Jenna Lyons is either paying to have her product in there, a portion, or take out five grand out of my salary that week, something. I, there's got to be a like deal. A, negotiating like negotiating it into Negotiating almost it. like I'm paying to have an ad on this show. Well, then what the hell did – okay, and I know you're friends with them and this is not a diss. Yeah. But – well, I think you're friends with the one. But Leah Black and Jill Zarin, they are yes. walking ads for everything that they do. And every time they have a scene, it's like, oh, my gosh, this is so crazy. You like this captain? They, this is they, a Jill Zarin they captain. Because weren't, they weren't paying for it. So they had – they they – have to do it like that. So they, they just want shove it up it. your ass? Like they want to shove it up th- your ass so that they, you do see it. But then, of course, people are... But then the cast is mocking it because they're getting jealous. Because they're like, I'm on this stupid show making a wreath, making $60,000. And Jenna Lyons just walked in giving gifts to everybody that is every single gift is a brand collab that she's doing. Because I mean, she's fucking there for a reason. Right. Because you, you started to watch it. You're like, why is this woman who made all this money at J. Crew is a lesbian, like, is not your typical housewife. Why is she doing this? She's doing this because she wants this lash line to be huge. And this is her opportunity. To, so whatever she negotiated with them, and I don't think it's just, oh, I just happen to be talking to this person about eyelashes. The, the, her using that Zoom with that woman... There was nothing interesting about that scene. Right. There, this isn't an actress that we recognize. She wasn't talking to Julia Roberts. Right. The, so that's why I think there was a, I think she financially paid to have her product mentioned this many times. You know, because. And that could be confidential, but I'm telling you, I know this. I feel like this is like on par with what we're speaking about, but yeah. I really respect, like, let's, well, I'll take it back to Lala for a second because she's like, when it came out with the whole Rachel shit, she's like, you could monetize off of this. Go out there, put it on a shirt, put, yeah. you know, at least you don't have a man to fucking steal, you yeah. know, like make the money, do it while you can. Why else are you guys putting yourselves on TV to have moments where you look like an asshole or your most vulnerable moments or you're partying, you get drunk or you get a divorce, whatever. Why else are you putting yourself out there unless it's to have some sort of come up with a business or something you have to think in this moment when you enter the game i'm going straight special forces here come on tara reed stick with me you have to think (laughs) that we are getting in this shit and what is the long game what are we starting what are our businesses another thing that stassi did really well it's like fucking if you're gonna be on here and you're gonna make yourself look like an asshole start a business well i mean in and in respect to bethany there's a scene where she meets luann in the hamptons and she drives her little Skinny girl car that's yeah. wrapped in the skinny girl. I remember and that. Luann is like, <laughs> why would you do that, darling? This is so, she thinks it's funny because Luann, honestly, it was, you know, ha- this was a long time ago. And Luann was really just being the countess. Right. And she was really just like, oh, you want to follow my life? Great. She wasn't thinking the long game at the time. Bethany was smart to do that. Right. And a lot of people, how can you not? follow it when you see lover boy and everything you'd be crazy not to i mean so if somebody just really comes on the show and they're like okay i'm gonna share my life like this jessel girl who has the twins yeah um like i really don't i still don't know what she does for a living i don't know and she's like oh i have to buy two of everything because i have twins do you really believe that she moved there just for the show yes you do i do i heard that she moved there for the show yeah but I don't know what the goal is except just to be famous because I don't even know what her job or product is or what. I know she keeps saying that she has to get back into it. She feels like she's what, what does she do? I, I don't even know. And then and she's like, Oh, I have twins, so I have to buy two of everything. And I'm like, wait a minute, can I just talk to twin people? Like, aren't you like parents of twins? Like, okay, once in a while I dress them alike. But isn't it kind of been taught like you probably shouldn't dress your kids alike all the time if you have twins? So why would you have to buy two of everything? Yeah, uh, why can't they just wear their brother's outfit? Or it's like you're you're making – yes, exactly. Like, like, and you're making like, them like, equal. It's like they need to be equal. Guess what? You know, I had to I had to deal with this with – I have a lot of brothers and sisters. And growing up, it was like you guys all need to be equal. I feel like my parents fucked me in that sense because growing up and now that I'm an adult, I'm like that's not how the fucking world works. And I'm not equal to – like there are people who are ten times better than me. And then there are real assholes that don't compare me to them. We're not equal. And that's okay. I also think as – 
as a parent too going forward. There's a lot of, um, you know, people that are like, okay, whether you're really rich or not, everybody gets this amount for Christmas or whatever. And I've always like told my kids, you know, whether I pay for a private school for one of you and you choose not to go to a private school, that's none of your business. All my kids are my kids and I will pay for what I feel that child needs or wants. If you're not asking for it, it's not like you're going to get the the money that I spent on the private high school. You're not now, my other son, going to get that as a, one extra when I die or something. Like, like parents, I just hate it when kids... I don't know who's, I don't know if it's the chicken or the egg. I don't know if it's the parents that set that, but I think that starts for like comparing and jealousy when actually it should be like, hey, if one child is a teacher and they need me to, you know, help with the down payment of a house and I can do that and my other child is running a Fortune 500 and has, I'm not going to also give that child. The fifty thousand that I gave to this, you know what I mean. You know, and I think, and I think you need to set that with your kids early on, so that they don't have issues when they're adults. And so far, I feel like my kids, hopefully, they've never expressed it. They don't have comparable financial jealousy towards each other at all. It's so funny that you say this because I met this woman at uh, while I was doing cardio. Met this woman, and her husband works for NASA, right? And they su- super rich down in Palm Beach, and their kids go to school with Baron Trump and the private schools and stuff. Well, the we went over there for dinner because he created this product that is going to mess up big pharma and it's going to help with things. And now you don't need medication and pills. So whatever. That was the backstory. The nine-year-old comes in and he says, he's like, dad, why don't you, since they want to go to private school, save the tuition, just pay me and I'll go to public school. And I looked and I was like, this little, like this little guy was just negotiating. He's like, pay me the tuition and I'll put it away. And then I'll buy a house when I turn 18. And his dad was like, no, you're going to private school. And I'm like, this, like, I mean. I've had that with my son too about college because um, he's aware how much it is. And he was like, I mean, I don't know, mom, really? Really? We're pay- we're writing this check for next semester or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, we are. And it's not a negotiable. And I even remember like with my getting married to my husband, his dad was very financially practical and all that stuff. And actually wasn't excited that my parents were throwing this big fancy wedding. And I remember my husband on the phone with him. And I think he was saying, like, this is crazy. Why don't you just ask them for the money so you can put it on a down payment for a house? And I remember he was like, it doesn't work that way, Dad. That's It's not the choice. It's yeah. not – this is what they're doing. This is what she wants. This is what her family wants. Like – you know, and, and then he stopped. But I was like, yeah, it's sometimes it's not like getting back to this, yeah, getting yeah, back to this yeah. housewives. OK, so that about let me see what else. Um, Uba, they were I felt they were mad that she's been sick and didn't have to work. Yeah. Which is always the thing I'm so aware of now. They get really mad when people it, they these reality stars, they treat this shit like a factory and you didn't come to the factory that day. And it's not fair that they have to make Reese and you're quote unquote coughing. But then if you FaceTime. If you FaceTime in, then you were featured in that episode and you get your $19,000. Or whatever it is. Or whatever Good it point. is. Good um, point. Let me see what else. Yeah. Um, the Aaron girl, I don't know what she does for a living. <laughs> and, you know, but she's got this, you know, the rich ex-fiance and she's, you know, being a flirt and whatever. I mean, it's like, I don't know. I just don't really feel like any of this is that interesting or real right now I, i'm waiting to see i really hope that they bring it at the reunion and i hope but i just don't know what there is to argue about there isn't because there there isn't strong there's not deep rooted friendships or even even when the housewives of new york started even if they weren't really close they really knew each other in social circles for many years prior right so there really was and it really was just about being a housewife it right. wasn't Jill Zarin sharing Zarin fabrics. And I mean, it evolved into that because that was their life. But the majority was the cameras following Jill dealing with the fact that, you know, Allie was still awkward around Bobby, her stepfather, and was 14. And we saw that. And, you know, you're going to go to the fat camp and all this other stuff, which one of the funniest moments I ever had hanging out with Jill and Allie was 
And I've told this story before, but it, it just is so funny. And I love Allie, her daughter, and we're at their house. I'm like doing shows in Palm Beach or something. So I'm staying at the house in where they live in Boca Raton. And Gloria is there, who's just classic older Jewish woman who's, you know, got beautiful skin and has had some work done and is great. And there was some conversation about weight and like, you know, who's gained weight and her like saying that Jill had or something. And then Jill gets in the car and we're driving back and she goes, see, Allie, see what I was, what my mother put me through talking about my weight. You know, at least I'm like that. And then Allie just totally dead panics is goes, um, no, mom, it's not like you put me on a reality show when I was 14 and sent me to a fat camp. Oh, my God. But she And did. I was like, where's the camera? And I'm laughing. And I'm like, yeah, that did happen. And thank God, Allie is so great and adjusted and they work together. And they it just lives with her for the they, rest of her life. They have life. a great life. But I mean. I mean, but also. But also then Jill not seeing it. And I just thought it was like so. A, just so real that you're like, my mom was meaner than I am. You should be happy. And then your daughter being like, yeah, but you did this. Like it was just perfect. Uh, and now Jill's just smuggling Diet Cokes into whatever country. It's the best. The fucking, I don't know what. Uh, uh, Jill, honestly, to me, she is comedic relief. I do like she watching is. her. No, it never stops. And yeah. it's like, again, completely, there's no difference. No difference. So would you rather <clears throat> have this, like if, if, the network came to you right now and they said, okay, we're going to give the decision 100% to you. We're I'm canning deciding. them. You're the deciding factor. We're canning them and bringing back the old cast and you get to put together the cast with the OGs. Are you doing that? I don't ever want to can anyone. Okay. Okay. So I think that this could have more time. Um, I would say if it doesn't work, if, it, if it's like you guys, and I think what will happen, prediction. Okay. 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 I think they will bring back some of the old cast. They're going to integrate them. And then they're going to keep a couple of them, of the new. And I'm going to predict Aaron and Jenna. And then and then maybe like one new person that's like in between. And that'll be the new cast of New York. It'll be like Luann, Sonia, and, and uh, Dorinda. Uh -huh. It will not be Ramona. I really do feel like Ramona has moved on. Yeah. She's got a boyfriend. It's like... I just don't think we have Ramona. Okay. But Dorinda and Luann are real friends, and and so is Sonia. So I think the three of they don't hate each other. They can work together. So I think the three of them are coming back with Jenna Lyons. Maybe this Erin, even though she's young, she's kind of an old soul. And then, like, one new person are will be Are you canning cast. Bryn? Because she has Sonia energy. Would they be fun together, or would that just be really annoying? I don't think I don't I don't know I don't know yeah I, yeah but that's Br I, Bryn, I agree Bryn has a personality you know she wanted to be on Vanderpump so I definitely think she's coming with her fake fur coat and she's she's pr almost practicing stuff before with she the, walks uh, in very Aviva like the, yeah. Aviva used to like write out her stuff so I've heard allegedly like before you know so she planned the leg throwing like I think she's kind of planning her moments which I don't blame her yeah like if I'm an actress and a writer if I was suddenly on a show. And I also studied reality show for the last 20 years. And I'm coming to a dinner party of yours. I would kind of be like, okay, what are we going to cover today? I want to cover that my special's coming out, you know, in in January, in which the show will be airing starting December. So I definitely want to mention that special. Right. And then I want to also, uh, you know, Adam was pissed at me about this one thing. So let me bring it up so we have a little tiff, but we can make up. I mean, how can you not? Right. And and if I don't think of it, the producer's going to remind me of that, you know? So, like, it is going to come up. You know what's scary about you is you have, like, this – and I feel like I'm starting to notice I have this shit, too. It's like you have these real manifesting abilities, and you come out with these predictions. And you're like – then all of a sudden, it's like maybe a month later. Maybe it's a week later. You don't put a timeline on it. Maybe it's a year later. And you're like, I fucking told you. I told you. I said it. I predicted it. Cue the video right here. I'm the one who told you this was going to happen. Yeah. So now I just believe this is what's happening. We have to say goodbye to Uba, Jessel. No, Uba's say, pretty fun, though. But I feel like she, I still don't really, like, know the depths of her. And she doesn't have a real, like, she doesn't have a, a kid. She doesn't, right? She doesn't, she's not married. Right. I don't know. But I do think she is funny and likable. Yeah. But I don't know. I just, I don't think we'll keep them all is my point. Um, OC, uh, we oh. saw Heather Dubrow's uh, a penthouse. Yeah. And I talked about this on my Patreon, but, like, you don't, this storyline of I'm back, moving to L.A., 
that you have to buy a fourteen million dollar penthouse so that you can be bright eyed and bushy tailed to read for a five line a Robert Cavalli part on on, War, on a Warner Brothers you know sitcom like it's just so stupid. Um, so so this prediction comes from a juicy scooper, and I don't remember who told me, so I'm I can't take full advantage. Okay. Remember she talked about Heather saying, oh, my God, you know, my son, what's the boy's name, Heather's son's name? Nick? Yeah. Nick is getting his real estate license, you know, and then he's the only one that comes over to look at the place, okay, look at the house, and he's like, this is a nice place, I love it, and they're ooing and awing over it, which, by the way, just, I don't think it photographed that well. It seemed small and and kind of weird For 5,000 square feet, it did, it, it yeah. just It doesn't photograph, I'm yeah. sure it's prettier in person, whatever. And it's got to be the textures, you know, so like the So I think she's planting the seeds for him to get into real estate when he graduates from college and have his own real estate show. I mean, I feel like she's always trying to push that. And then, and then Max, her daughter, just did a song. Yeah. And actually not bad. Not bad. I actually didn't listen to it, but it, it's not. It wasn't bad. Okay. Like my sister and I both listened to it. I'm like, this isn't bad, but it is, you know, the auto-tune and all that. Uh-huh. So it's not like she wrote it in her dorm room and was playing a guitar like Taylor Swift. Yeah. So what? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe she's maybe that's part of it. She's doing her Sheena energy. She's yeah, like, she's doing like all this kind of stuff. But um but yeah, the, my favorite is just thank God for Shannon Bedore and you know and her spreading rumors about herself and talking with her hands cuz that's the show. If Shannon Bedore was not on the show Nobody would be watching this show this season, in my opinion. You know, it's funny because I have sort of a weird connection with this cast. Yes. And can't be as weird as mine, but go ahead. Oh no, no, no. Don't Yours try to is top it. no no no. There's it's definitely not. Yeah. So Tamara Tamara and I, like, I even was I think I was supposed to go to happy hour with her today. We were yeah. going back and forth. But she of course, there's two T's in a pod, and I find Teddy Mellencamp to just not be great reality TV, and that's okay, because I don't think I'd be great reality TV, and I think that's that fine. she does good yeah. with the podcast, Yeah, right? I agree. So I would go on, and I would do videos, and I would talk about things that Tamara— By the way, I do want to say, Teddy, I just saw her on Nick Vial's show, Uh huh. and I did not know who she was. She looked completely different. But in a beautiful way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she beautiful looks great. before, and the, this new face is beautiful. But I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Like she really doesn't look like herself. The, all the comments were like, "I didn't know who this was." Do you remember Legally I don't know Blonde? What she, I don't know. I know that sometimes with a lower facelift, you you, it's really it almost takes a year to get done. Uh huh. So you can really you end up looking better and better and better. And yeah. I know she did that. and She was honest about it. There's something different about the eyes. Now, what she might have done, honestly. Oh, the eyelid. No, the eyelid or probably the eyelid, but also it's those drops. There's these drops that change the shape of your eye. What the fuck is that? Oh, yeah. And and my friend gave it to me and I put them in and I looked so different. And I like my eyes. I have no problem with the shape of my eyes. I'm trying to figure out which one I like better right now because <laughs> this one has an allergic reaction. You and might, it's you of... might just put one drop. Yeah. But it literally, it it makes them bigger, but it's sort of sh- – so if you have small eyes, I guess, but I already have big eyes. And I just was like, I don't want to fuck with this. I just like the the one with the purple cap that you get at Target. Yeah. You, you the know, Lumi. Lum, I like Lumify. Yeah, yeah Lumify. I, it just op- it just makes them takes any kind of red away really well. I mean, I just brought Visine in here with me. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that stuff is good. But anyway, I don't know if that's it because it was like her eyes look different now. She's always had a really nice nose. I don't know what, but she looked very different. Good for her. She's a very pretty, in my opinion. So it's like, and she looks prettier now. She looked prettier before. But do you remember? Do you do you remember Legally Blonde? Yeah. And do you remember when the girl had the alibi? Yes. And she's like, she's like, I was getting liposuction. Yes. I was getting, and she's like, <gasps> it's like, okay, we're, we also have, we're an accountability coach and we're holding people accountable. But then you were talking about like getting certain words. It, it all, listen. Wait, did she get lipos? No. No, I don't think no, she did no. liposuction. She did. I don't know what she did, but at the end of the day, my thing is. is I really wonder with, with the, you know, ex- I, and I feel like people are very much more accepting um, of anybody doing kind of any Ozempic or Manjaro or, or. Yeah, just get some, your work done. So, um. Now I think people have chilled out about – I think the people were were keeping it a secret because the minute you were a celebrity and you said, you know, I did lose these 30 pounds because I've been taking this for a year. Yeah, we're taking it from – you know, like as if – like skinny housewives. 
or some poor diabetic is getting out of the car at the handicap and going to get his prescription and a housewife swoops in and take the takes the last amount. And, you know, that's not what was happening. And it seems to be that everybody seems to be able to get their medicine. Right. I don't know. I'm not 100 percent sure. But I feel like now people are being a little more honest about if they're taking it or not. And, and they're not getting as much of a backlash from, like, the audience. And I'm curious, does she even have to – like, why would you have to spend $600 a week to have Teddy tell you you can only have two carrots, not three, when you can just take this shot and just be less hungry? I, I mean, I saw – For less money. I saw Ozempic for the first time the other day. I went in my dad's fridge and it was in there. And I was like, Dad, are you on Ozempic? And he's like, son, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That's my diabetes medication. And he's like, I'm pre-diabetic. And I was like, my dad's like a bona fide housewife. Look at him but good go. For, but good for them. Like, who cares? Yeah. I mean, my God. God made plastic surgeons and scientists too. So if there's something is better and easy for us, no one's taking a shortcut. But I'm just curious if she is even pursuing that business, being that she's busy with her podcast and also just I don't know why someone would go do a business that that's just someone texting you being mean to you on a text to tell you to take 500 calories when you could just let me be the villain in this story. I'll do it for free. Yeah, I'll mean rage. Text but I, I, does she even promote that? business anymore do we know i i don't think so but you know what they do i mean do even great. even even tamra saw the writing on the wall that got rid of the gym Tam- fuck well, that just Tam- take a shot and take my cbd gummy and be happy she inst- don't she, be hungry and and pass out she messaged me on instagram and she's like why do i always feel like you make me sound like an asshole i was like no i think that you sometimes make yourself sound like an asshole and then i talk about you being an asshole but i really like you and i think that you're great for the show but if you're an asshole That's okay. You know, and I had the most awkward interaction with Shannon Bedore. And this was at BravoCon. And I had to go on an apology tour with Gina. And this was also at BravoCon. Because I did a sit down with a former housewife of OC. and Kelly Dodd. Okay. And we ended up um, talking. And she knew that I was renovating my house at the time. And she said, oh, what's your style? So she was friends with Shannon. And she's like, oh, my God, that's what Shannon's kitchen looks like. Let me, let's call her after this interview and let's go right over there. She lives like right down the road. OK, so I thought that they were fully friends. Then I get to BravoCon and I introduced myself and I was like, hi, I, w- I was actually on so the phone. So you with- never did go to the house. We never went okay. to the house. So I introduced myself and I said, you know, I talked to you or Kelly talked to you on the phone and I was there and I was the guy who was coming to see your kitchen. And she goes, what? What? You know, like kind of what? I don't like, know who you are. I don't know who the f- you are. Up and Adam, down and I don't know. She's like down and out. All I know yeah. is that I was a very good friend to Kelly. Oh. I was an excellent friend. I was there. I don't know why people are saying things. I don't know what. I don't know what's happening. Uh, she. This uh, is my goddamn plate. This. Uh, she, it was. Well, I didn't realize. But you know how like everything moves so fast in this world, right? They're friends today. And tomorrow they're not. And also a BravoCon situation. There's so many people coming at it. I mean, it is like. Yeah. You, it's overstimulation between uh, for the for the. Uh, stars yeah for people like you and me and for the fans yeah. it is just a lot someone just wrote something that someone sent to me that I was so rude at BravoCon and then I was walking through the the in the New York one and I had a phone and I was ignoring fans well okay you know I I'm lucky enough that if I'm not a Bravo but people recognize me and so when I was trying to actually go to an event, People were asking for photos, and I was taking them, but I really had to be somewhere. Right. So at a certain point, how am I going to get there if I took a photo with every single person? And I'm not blowing someone off. There literally isn't enough time. And I and I hadn't eaten all day, and I literally was saying to people, you guys, you saw me faint on stage at Tempe. If I don't eat something, I am not – and I get it. I know – I'm. It's, they, they just want a picture. Yeah. They don't care about me. I mean, some of them do, but some of them don't. Some of it is just like, how many pictures can I collect of the celebrities? And I totally get that. But I also, at a certain point, I'm like, and it's not me thinking I'm fucking, you know, whatever, Julia Roberts. It's not. And so, but it's like, you can't please people. So it's like, I also think if she was rude or or she was, uh, it's like sometimes you... 
so many people were probably coming at her. She oh, no, no. didn't I, really no, even I didn't know how she I find it to knew. be, like, so rude. I just found it to be, like, oh, fuck, I didn't know that there was a disconnect. And, like, you guys are no longer friends. Because well, she looked at me like, oh, shit. They can be shit. friends one day and not, like, you don't know, it, like, like, throughout switches. the years. Yeah. But also, I want to say really quick about the whole people, you know, like, having that opinion and being, like, she's rude. I just watched this uh, on Saturday when I went to serve for the brunch. Yeah. And I see people walking up to Lisa. I see people walking up to Sheena. And one of the things that I just want to tell anybody if you are going up to people and you're asking, can I take a photo? Just have the fucking camera ready. Have the photo app open. Now, yes. can I take a photo? Then pull out our phone and then fucking like, oh, shit. Sorry. It's on video. I made this mistake when I was 18. Hoda Kotb was jogging down in New York City. I was visiting for the first time. Bright eyed, bushy tailed. And I chased after her. And I'm starting to jog after Hoda Kotb. I didn't even know who. <laughs> My uncle said that's Hoda Kotb. So I start running. And then I said, can I take a photo with you? And I had it on video. And I'm like, oh, shit sorry sorry hold on let me can i just fuck and then i finally got the photo and now looking back i'm like i am that asshole like just have your camera app open have and, it on photo. and honestly you may have never thought of that so yeah i would just say that you know like most of us are really going to be happy we're out in public we want to be recognized <laughs> we're going to be nice about it um, but like, yeah. And the other thing, and Heather I, McDonald's and I, in listen, the wild. listen, I, and I've told my story of when I walked and squatted down with Jerry Seinfeld and totally overstayed my welcome. And I still haunts me to this day. So like, I've been the, the person too, that hasn't thought about the fact that, Hey, these two people are at a restaurant. They, they met, they want to, they're chatting. They're in the middle of a conversation. They want to finish it. They're happy to acknowledge that you like their show and they're happy to take a photo. But like, that doesn't make them an asshole that they want to finish the conversation with their friend. You don't know what they're talking about. You don't know if someone's bleak to telling, like, oh, my God, Adam, I'm so glad you're here. Um, you know, last week the funeral for my mom was this. And then someone walks in and is like, hi, sorry, I'm a really big fan. You know, I'm just saying, just think. People have to also just know that, that these people still have a right to have a meal in public. And well, like have a nice time, and they I think may there was a be little bit of that last night. Harder. To be yeah. fair, right? There was a, just a, a different instance where, yeah, you know, there was something that we were we were talking about the show. We were going over something, and yeah. then you know, like it's kind of a similar situation. But yeah, it it is sometimes, and you but know. But I know the intention is so good. Yeah, yeah. The intention is totally good. I would just say also just be a, w a little bit aware of that as well. But yeah. I always tell people like you could absolutely come up to me, ask for a picture, whatever. Um, you know, and if I go out, I know that's the, the case, and I I would never say no. But I also want to be sen you know, have you be sensitive to other people that maybe are really having a real deep conversation or right. not in the mood or whatever, you mm -hmm. know. And that doesn't make them an asshole that you know or a rude or don't write up to do a TikTok about them or do it in moi. Yeah, like let them just have dinner with their friend. Like it's just you know, it's I, okay. I was so out I, at Javier's and Heather's people, an asshole. Yeah, I appreciate the people that kind of see you. And they kind of do wait for the opportunity of you walking to the bathroom or seeing you wait for your car. Those are times you absolutely can approach someone, I yeah. think. You know what I mean? There's time. There's a five minutes. You're waiting for your car. That's a great time to go and ask, oh, my God, hi, can I get a photo? Because you're not interrupting a conversation. There's time. They are dressed. They're cute. They went out in public. I'm. Just, you know what's so funny? It's. I completely, when I come to LA and like, yes, well, like in that situation yesterday and talking about, you know, Scandaball and stuff on YouTube, when I come to LA, it's very different than living in Florida, right? In yeah. Florida, it's like, I don't fucking know anything about you and you do YouTube, like what's your real job and yeah. all of these yeah. things, right? And then when you come into LA, it's like, hey, up and at them. And it's, it's not like, it's not all the time, you know? Right. But, but especially if I put myself around them, yeah. you know, then I know that they're, they're going to be the those little fun moments like last night and it's really fun i just i get so excited when oh, anybody totally. is like but also it's because then i go back to my little shell of a shithole back in florida yeah and then i sit there and it's like i don't know who the fuck you are and i'm like i'm that's good with me it's like my retreat i um i just thought this was kind of a funny story this woman's been missing for eight years she's fine she didn't realize she was on the missing her family said she was missing she didn't have children or a husband she just really didn't want to fuck with her family. She didn't know. <laughs> what? What? They found this woman and they're like, you've been on the missing list for eight years. And she's like, I have. Her family put her on missing because she just was done with them, in my opinion, and like wasn't keeping in touch. 
but she wasn't kidnapped. She wasn't harmed. Like, she just didn't want to fuck with them. I thought I was going to be on the missing list last night, to be honest with you. So this is something that, shit, maybe, oh, I have, a, that's a totally different story. Oh, I got to tell you about no, this. I tell, tell, you. tell the story. Okay. So last night after we end up leaving, yeah. you know, and everybody goes home, right? There was the bottle service, all of that. Yeah. It was a great night. Everybody's having fun. Well, we got back to the hotel and I went to call my mom. I talked to my mom's at my house watching my dogs and I just went to call her and give her a recap of the night. And I take my AirPods and I told Jason, I said, I'm going back outside and I'm going to walk because I know you're going to sleep. Well, when we got there, we left our hotel key at the bourbon room mm. with my Okay. fucking Ray-Bans, and we had to go up to the front desk when we first got back to the hotel, the Kempton, Beverly Hills. Right. I'm giving you a shout out because I want a free night. Yeah. And they had to change our room key. So then I walk out after changing the room key, grab the old room key off the dresser, and 30 minutes, come back. Now it doesn't work. Now right. it doesn't work. And Jason, your husband's asleep. My husband's passed out. Right. He, he enjoyed the night, right? Yeah. I go downstairs. There's this really big bitchy man who I was like, hi, hi. I was just down here with my husband. You saw me. Literally, you saw me. And he changed our room keys. I said, um, I just need another key. He fell asleep. And he's like, long night. And I was like, yeah, you can say that. And I was like, he said, I need your ID. I handed him my ID. And he's like, doesn't say Jason on it. And I was like, right. And he's like, your name's not on the room. And I was like, okay, but that card with my LLC on it, that my business card that's attached to this account, it's my business card. I'm married. Do you need photo? What do you need? I said, I also have my husband's email on my phone. I can show you the reservation, everything. He's like, sir, I need you to relax right now. There are people who come here and cheat on their spouses all the time, and we can't just let you go barge in the room. And I was like, <laughs> what kind of fucking, what kind of story is that, right? And he's like, I need you to relax right now. And I was like, he said, do you want me to call the room? I said, oh, it's funny that you say that, Kent in Beverly Hills, because er earlier that afternoon, I forgot shaving cream. So I called down to the hotel or to the lobby. I tried to call down and my phone isn't working. The so, phone in the room. The phone in the room. Yeah. So then I went down there and I was like, hey, I was just trying to call you guys, but I guess my phone in the room is not working. They said, do you want us to send somebody up to switch out the phone? I said, no, I'm headed out and I have all my shit everywhere. I don't want you guys going in my room. That's why there's the do not clean right now. So no, they didn't go switch to the phone. So now, of course, the phone doesn't work for him to call up to wake Jason up. And I'm telling him this. And I said, "What are you, can you do a wellness check? Can you open the door? He's like, would you like me to call the police to do a wellness check? And then I said, no, can you just go open the door? This is my room. And I said, you just saw me. He's like, I don't remember seeing you. I was like, really? Really? And so then he said, sir, you need to back away from the desk or I'm calling the police and I'm, I'm telling them you're harassing me. And I was like, so I look at my phone. My phone is on 6%. I have my mom on the phone like, this is ridiculous. My mom's like, Adam, what is going on? I have my wallet, everything. I'm walking at like two o'clock in the morning through Beverly Hills. I find myself, I don't even know what the hotel was called. It was a motel next to like a, a Crackle Barrel or something, an IHOP or something, some shitty hotel. I took a photo of it. I have to show you. There's a little AC unit in the window, these plaid, awful like curtains and this bed, totally probably a bed bug something. And I probably, maybe it's why I'm itchy. But then all of a sudden at 5.30 in the morning, I wake up to a text because I asked the guy downstairs, do you have a charger? And he's like, I don't think anybody here has iPhones. And let me see if there's one at in the, the lost and at, found. At the bad hotel. At okay, the bad yeah. hotel. And so he found one. He's like, oh, look, I have one right here. Yeah. I was like, oh, thank you. So you're at the crappy hotel. You yeah. have a phone charger. 5.30 in the morning. I look up my phone. My mom, are you alive? Yes, mom. And then Jason. Don't ever go. Yes, mom. That is all we care about. Is no, that our kid no. Is alive. I mean, like, uh, okay, like that go not ahead. not in a bad way. I know, but as a mother. No, I love my mom okay. is my best friend. Okay, but then Jason, hey, where are you? Where am I? I've been through a total fucking shit show after literally doing Sheena's show, having a great night, Tara fucking Reed and her bullshit and everything else. And Fighting then, Tom Sandoval's new girlfriend. And now yeah. you saw me today. I'm walking all bow-legged and shit from these heels. Like my, I brought new Not shoes heels, here. But shoes, yeah, yeah, shoes that look like okay, my heels. This is, oh my God, it's crazy. I have two quick stories. Uh, One is a Josh Wolf story, the comedian Josh Wolf. Yeah. He had something happen where, his wife, you know, was traveling with him and she went to the room 
and same thing, didn't have a key or whatever, and his name was not on the room, and she passed out and was asleep. And then, so he had to get another room, and she's waking up in the middle of the night, and she's like, that motherfucker, like, what is he doing, cheating on me? Like, what is, where is he? All this awful stuff. So that's happened. The Definitely the moral of the story is make sure that whoever is in the room, that both of your names are on it, regardless of the card, regardless of who, if you went through yeah. the, the hotel or Expedia, I always make sure when my husband's joining, Peter is on it, or my son, or whatever, or vice versa. The other thing that happened, or when I was like 20, I was in San Francisco, it was 22 or something, and we were there for like the SC Stanford game, and we were staying at my friend's aunt's place, and we like, I didn't know where they, we I was hanging out with some people, they already went back and it was like this gate and I couldn't get in the gate. And this is like before cell phones. And I didn't know where I was going to go. And I had no credit card or any money. And so these guys come and the guy's like, I'm like, I think I just got to stay at this hotel. And so the guy paid for my hotel and I'm like, okay, bye. And I like locked the door and he's like trying to get in. And I'm like, just leave me alone. It was so awful. It was so scary, but it was this oh. a very similar, awful thing. So I'm saying, it's a learning. Curve. I also always ask for like four keys. Yeah, and then make sure that everybody is on the name. Well, then once he when he switched the key, it deactivated. Right. No, I understand my, uh, that because but, the key uh, didn't work. But like, yeah, yeah. Um, one wow. more th- question I wanted to ask because there's all this stuff that's happening with the divorce between Kevin Costner and Christine. Oh. She says the 129 is not sufficient for her child support. She said when they met, he was worth 100 million. Now he's worth 400 million, so it has to be adjusted. You know, the kids, he's not, this isn't a custody thing, but you started to tell me a story about you. And I did, and you were fine oh. to share it. And I do think this is an interesting situation about, because you're a child of divorce. Yes. So what happened? Okay. So um, this is funny. Uh, 129000 That is definitely not enough for anybody to raise a kid. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, a month. Yeah. A month. Um, my mom, actually, my mom and my dad, um, they were already divorced, but... My dad and her, they had joint custody. Well, my dad, a long time ago, he, when my mom was pregnant with me, he ended up leaving her and had this girlfriend. She was a psychopath. And then years later, when I'm 13, he ended up leaving his new wife for this woman. My mom hated this woman. She like triggered her. So my dad's like, you know what? You're causing problems in my life. I'm moving my son from Palm Beach, Florida to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and there's nothing you can do about it. My mom was like, okay, I'm taking you to court. Uh, now, were you the only child of your mom's? I'm the only child between my mom and my okay. dad, and then they have other children. Okay. But so my dad said, I'm taking him to Tennessee. They both lawyered up. Well, come to find out, my dad's attorney was the same attorney, I believe her name is Christy, who represented um, whoever to get Anna Nicole Smith to her body to the Bahamas next to her son, Daniel. Mm. And my mom sat in a mediation room across from this woman. She was a shark. And she started talking about how my mom was not capable of taking care of me because she already has two kids and she worked two jobs. My mom was a career server and she was always hustling, always working. You know, she had kids really young. And She's talking about how So the only reason that, that, that she was saying that she was not qualified is just because she really wasn't wealthy. There was no No, and my drugs, dad made a lot more money. But there was no drugs. No or drugs, anything. no okay. alcohol, okay. Prob- like none of that. Oh, none yeah. of that. It was just like you are a working mom and his dad can give him a better life. Well, the way that she was presenting it, they I just learned this from my dad. They went in there and my dad said, if you press on her, you press on her, he, she, she, like you will trigger her. And She'll you'll snap. get a reaction. Yeah. She'll snap. That's exactly what they did. So my mom, it's, it was like a Shannon Medora. It's on my fucking plate, you bitch. Yeah. And like, she's like, you fucking bitch. And called her every Your name Your mom the called book. the attorney a bitch. A bitch. Yeah. And she looked at my dad and she looked at my mom and she's like, okay. She's like, I'm waiving all of the fees and you just made this personal. You're losing your kid. And whoa. It was literally like a month later, full custody. I was in the back of a van and I am getting drove, like driven to Tennessee and I left and I went from seeing my mom three out of the uh, seven days a week and she would pick me up and all of that to seeing her for seven days for Christmas and a month and a half for summer. But then my evil stepmom would make me come back the second half because 
it w- I would have to readjust to what life was with rules and regulations. So I would only get such a limited time with her until I was 18. I hate this story. But going oh. back, no, because it just, it, like, it wasn't fair, you know? So going back to it, I'm it's s- just like, I know. It, she's just like my best friend. And, like, now everything that I do, whether it's, like, when I moved to New York or Florida, I just have her with me everywhere, and I want her to be a part of everything that I do. Because you missed all that time. Because I missed it, yeah. So that is not what I intended. Sorry. Sorry. I'm a cancer. But, but I honestly, I, I wanted you to tell the story because you, you mentioned it briefly before we started the show, and I said, are you okay talking about it? And I wanted you to talk about it because, I, I mean, I'm, you know, I, <sighs> Whatever. I I just talked to so many people, and I think we don't hear enough from adults that lived through the divorce. Yeah. And lived through the custody and lived through the things and their perspective. And I think their perspective is really important that people hear that that might be going through that today. And I'm not saying there's a way to get out of it as a parent that's, you know, at odds with their ex about custody, but like, you know, and and the and the splitting of time and like you know, um, one thing I said was when they when you do live in the same town and you split the week in half and stuff. How I brought it once up on a show and people were like, "I'm so glad you brought that up because it was awful." And you're right; it would be better if we could go back more to the more traditional of like the mom has a kid during the week and the dad is the Disneyland dad or whatever. Yeah. And I think there was something that happened where it was like. No, fathers should have rights, and I agree with that. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. I think the family system is really, unfortunately, it's it's like they tried to make strides one way, and in the end, it's always just the kids that miss out. Yeah. And it's just like, it's really unfortunate how heartbreaking that must have been. And you would have wanted to be with your mom oh, in yeah. retrospect. And not, well, not, 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 it's not like you had a choice. Well, the problem was, and like, and my dad, and I feel so bad because the woman, like, I, I it was, I haven't gone to therapy for this sort of thing, you but just the did woman, right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but the woman who he had, um, she really did, like, she tortured me, like, torture, like, physically, mentally, emotionally, like, with food. There was a lot of things, like, one what do you time mean she wouldn't let you eat. No, she would try, she would pick things that I, couldn't eat or that whatever and that would be dinner for the night and if I didn't eat it then I didn't eat and then her kids like would get like mommy dearest with the steak oh like psycho but and then her kids would get chicken tenders and pizza and then there was one time <sighs> where she poured a bowl of like hot chili on my chest right and I had a mark I had like still right here I still have a mark and then there was another time when we moved <sighs> up to Tennessee my mom wrote in this journal every day for the summer when she was in between her breaks. And it was this little book. And I remember finding it because it was in her compartment in the middle of her car. And it was just every day her writing how much she loved me. And like, I'm thinking about you. And it was supposed to be positive, right? And th- she would take photos with those little things. like, And it spits out the photo right away. And Polaroid, yeah. Yeah, Polaroid. And she, all of these things, well... Wendy took that and she burned the, all the photos of her. She took the book, so I didn't have that to oh, because reference. Because you took the book, it was your in your possession. Yeah, my mom gave it to me when I left. Yeah, she destroyed your mother's book. She destroyed the book. She destroyed all the <sighs> photos. I came home and my laptop with all of my photos of my mom and my brothers. It was floating underneath the. It was in the bathtub. And what would your dad say about all this stuff? My well, she would manipulate my dad, and my dad. So my dad had like he really. She had a a handle on him she and was truly the evil stepmother she really was and she she would say you know like i didn't do that your son he's just mad that you're not with his mom he thinks you guys are going to get back together he's doing like derek you can obviously see that this is a problem but my dad the reason i didn't want to live with my dad at the time was my dad's a workaholic he worked 80 hours a week he works you know climbing telephone poles and just like all of these other things that he did and he had his own business he was never home so if i wanted to bond with my dad i would sit in his work truck while he was working and that, those were my moments with dad so usually i was with her and that's why i didn't understand understand why I had to go live with her because she was raising me and going back to it I said to her because my mom would write me a letter every single day in the mail and stick it in the mail and put money in for food and stuff because she knew that I wasn't eating and she knew everything that was happening oh my God. it was terrible I can't even imagine it, if my son it was, t- was it, going through this so then I set the bitch up and I was like oh we're gonna I'm gonna get her my dad pulled me out of school one day early and he said 
son, will you go check the mailbox? He's like, pull over. Because Tennessee, you live on a couple acres, right? Mailbox is way at the fucking end of the street. And we open the mailbox and there's a card from my mom, right? So I was like, dad, 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 this is the moment. I kept telling him, she is stealing my mail from my mom. No, she's not. She wouldn't do that. I'm like, dad, I'm telling you, mom's not lying to me. She's sending me things. And he's like, okay, you want to do that? We'll do it. So we put the mail back in the mailbox. And then my dad said, you know what? Shit, son. I need to go get a part really quick from Walmart. I'm going to go to Walmart. And I said, I'm going to sit here and stare at this mailbox. And I'm waiting. Comes in. So you're like hiding, staring at it? I'm looking out the window, watching her. She pulls up in this excursion and it says her name and last name Way because it was all about her way. And she pulls up, grabs the mail, and then she comes up and I walk up and let's just call her asshole. So yeah. I was like, hi, asshole. Um, is there, did I get any mail from my mom? Don't you think if you had a letter, I would fucking tell you? Get out of my face. And I was like, okay, well, have a good day. And I was like, I got you. I got you. My dad comes home 10 minutes later and I said to him, what happened? And he's like, how do I know that you didn't go back when I went to Walmart and took it out to frame her? And I was like, you got to be kidding. Well, then eventually my dad and her got a divorce. My dad ended up leaving her and she left all of her stuff in our house. And it was just, that was my time to get even. She had a really bad eBay addiction. She bought all designer things. I literally took bleach to everything. It was like, I couldn't get, an, I knew she was out of my life. I took her camera. I slashed the, or slammed the camera on the ground. I did everything to her that she did to me. Now that I knew that my dad had moved on, he found a new woman and he wasn't into her anymore. I was safe. This is like, oh, now it's time. I like literally barricaded. We had a tri-level house. Did you ever house. find any of the letters? From No. Oh, she probably just threw them away. No, she would take the money out of them and then she would throw them away. <sighs> Yeah, everything. But it just now come to find out she reached out to me two years ago and apologized for torturing me legitimately. What did she say? She said, you know, I just I want to say I saw you on YouTube. And I was like, oh. And she's like, I want to say that I'm so sorry for everything. And I was like, I don't forgive you ever for that because of how long it was. Right. And I'm not a victim or a martyr. My husband taught me that. Like when I when I met him, I met him at 20 and he said, you can't make your life about this. You're free from that. You're safe now. So now you live your life. You're not a victim. And it was so true. You know, I just as a mom. Of a boys, too, especially of anybody, boy or girl, um, to think that my kid was going to for your mom to know that she was sending all this to you. And that she financially couldn't win. Yeah. And that this woman was torturing her son. And you'll never get those. I'm so glad that you're close now. Yeah. But it fucking infuriates me. It infuriates me whenever I see anything about any child abuse. Yeah. I mean, it's child abuse. It was absolutely horrific. And I don't care that this woman now realizes it. Yeah. I mean, I hope that she <clears throat> will have some type of penance and and is making up for it in some other good way for the torture that she put you through. But... Wow, that is such an awful story. Well, and it breaks my heart now because now I have my dad apologizes to me for it all the time for not. And how awful for your dad! Just like a woman that brings in a man who tortures their kids or molests their kids or whatever, and the woman thought this guy was going to be a great father figure. I always feel really bad for the parent that didn't know or didn't believe. Yeah, that's got to be torture for them too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I and it wasn't I was always a liar, right? But now that he knows, it's like and I do feel bad now because now he always feels guilty for it. And my mom's like, "I told you that bitch was crazy. I told you." And my mom is just like, my mom is like like sweet home Alabama, like you don't mess with mama kind of that that is how she is. She's sharp on the tongue and she's witty and she's like if I see that bitch one day, like if I ever see I'd her, kill her and I'm like, no, it's like, it was like when Bethany said like, like I would murder somebody. Yeah, that acting of like, I would kill someone. I could, no, no. Yeah. No, this my mom real, really would this, kill somebody. This really, I yeah. would. In this situation, like, you know, but again, I'm not a victim, not a martyr, but it it, it is like, wow. It's just looking back. Wow, Bethany. Wow. You know? Wow. 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 Yeah, wow. Um, well, we've talked for a really long time. We had some fun. We got some juice. Yeah. And we got some heart. Might be a perfect episode. Oh, shit. Sorry. 
Sorry, it's oh, awesome. Sorry. Okay, good. It was awesome. Um, yeah. I adore you. Um, tell everybody if they're not aware of how they can follow you and find you and all that good stuff. Yeah, you guys can find me on Up and Adam Live on YouTube, and then we have Up and Adam Live Two now, which is like our messy little sister channel where we have all of the spillover content because we just pump out a lot and. People don't know this, but after a certain amount of videos on YouTube, the algorithm like suppresses your your content and it doesn't push it out the same. So okay. it's like, okay, so then we need a second channel. So up and at live one and two. That is awesome. Yeah. Thank you for being so open and sharing. And I'm so glad that we're friends. Yeah, me too. Jason always says to me, he's like, I, you're too much of an open book, but this felt like therapy. I feel good. I think it's going to touch a lot of people's heart, whether they were a victim as a child, or they were a victim of a horrible court system. They're so you're, you might be hearing a lot, but I just think the fact that you're doing so great today and the fact that you have a great relationship with your mom and your dad, yeah, you won, even yeah. though you had to suffer through so much. Yeah. But maybe that's why you are a nice, successful person too. Hey, I'll keep you around, Heather. And thank you for <laughs> having me. Thank you for having me. And just like, it's always just, it's great to see you. Seeing you last night and then just being, I was so excited because the first time I came here, I was so nervous. And this time I was just like, let's do the damn thing. Let's fuck shit up. Juicy scoop. Good. You know? Yeah. Love you. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>